Valentine's and or Galentine's Day. It's a lot of attention from retailers. However, members of the LGBTQ community may be recognized during Pride Month, but are often overlooked on Valentine's Day. So, if you want to make the celebration a bit more inclusive, stay tuned to see how I created this Valentine's Day gift set for some friends of mine who are a same gender couple. The set includes a sea turtle snack charcuterie board, matching cheese tools, and complimentary coasters. Hello, gentle people. If this is your first time visiting my channel, or if you are a returning subscriber, welcome to this Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. I create custom and personalized products and gifts, and I hope that you will see or hear something that inspires you to create something beautiful. I'm Hazel, a retired educator turned resin artist, and I like the term entrepreneur. And every week I share how I create the products that are available in my Etsy shop and my Shopify boutique. And I'm adding new holiday and special occasion gifts to my shops each week. As always, if you like what you see but don't want to take the time to make it yourself, please feel free to purchase it at Sparrow Art Vibes shop on Etsy. Also, if you are inspired by my video, please do like, share, and of course, subscribe if you aren't a current subscriber. And uh, now let's just take a look at the materials we need to make our same gender Valentine's Day gift set. Okay, gentle people, let's look at the materials that we need for our Valentine's Day gift set. So we have a 16 by 12 inch uh, cutting board. <clears throat> and I happen to like this board because it does have a juice groove on it. And of course we will put the design on the opposite side. To go with those, the board, uh, we have a set of tools. And so we're going to take one, two, three, four cheese tools out of that box. This set will have two beverage coasters, two hexagon coasters, so we need two um, hexagon coaster molds. I always try to present the materials in the order that I'll use them. So the next thing we'll need is our painter's tape. I always basically prime my boards with a uh, white gesso. Uh, you can always use acrylic paint, but gesso is designed for that purpose. Uh, and of course, you need a brush to paint the gesso on. And then we will need, we will need some assorted um, acrylic paints. And so I have the Master's Touch Ocean Green. I have the PBO. I love this stuff. The PBO um, Iridescent. The PBO Iridescent Green Yellow. All right, this is gorgeous. And then I have some extreme sheens. Haven't decided which ones I'm going to use, so I'm just going to put a bunch of them out here. I have a teal. I have a aquamarine. I have a pink tourmaline. And you'll see why I have the pink um, in a minute. And we will do our artwork on our water slide inkjet decal paper, which we will just fit in there like so. I don't know which color vinyl I'll use for the lettering, but I'm just gonna lay this one here so we know that we need vinyl. And once all of that is put together, 
Then it's time for us to close everything up with our resin. So we need our Craft Smart Part A resin. We need our Craft Smart Part B hardener. We'll need a measuring cup. Yeah, where can I put that? Stick that there. Using two colors of mica powder, so I have two stir sticks. We of course need our nitrile gloves. And for mica powder, we need the mica powder for the beverage coasters. And so we're going to be doing the rim in the eye candy Okinawa blue. And we are going to be doing the background in the May Spring White Chalcedone. And I do believe that's everything. So let's clear this off the table and we'll start to have some fun. Okay, so we are going to mix 80 milliliters of resin. Uh, these cups, these markers are not uh, the best on new measuring cups, but I've got 40 mark there and 80 mark there. So we are going to do 40 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And then 40 milliliters of the Part A resin. Okay, and of course I forgot my reminder to always use the manufacturers. <clears throat> and I forgot my reminder that you should always follow manufacturer's instructions. We are doing the Craft Smart Clear Casting and Coating Resin, and it tells us that we should mix equal amounts, mix equal amounts of part A and part B so that we have a mixing ratio of one to one. We did that 40 and 40. And then it tells us to slowly mix for a minimum of five minutes. So that's what we're going to do. Set our timer for five minutes. Okay, so we are starting our timer. Because this would be the next step anyway um, and we're going to take most of this and pour it in here we'll save a little bit in case we need some for the board we'll save a couple of drops for the board for the most part anything that's on this board at this point uh, should be cool so I am using the Okinawa blue that blue sort of matches what's on the board. Okay, so I've mixed the Okinawa blue and what I'm going to do is just pour it into the rims of these two uh, molds. So I don't think you can see it on camera. I'm going to pour this and then I'll show you what I did. do this over this but I want to make sure you see what I'm doing that I'm pouring so I am using 
using the heat gun to pop the air bubbles. So these have the blue Okinawa, ooh, the Okinawa blue in these. Great. Okay, so we are going to um, cover these and allow them to cure. Allow them to cure overnight. We now have to mix the background resin for the coasters. So we are going to mix 100 um, milliliters. So that will be 50 milliliters of the Part B hardener. milliliters of the part a resin and we already know that we are mixing for five minutes And you know, I am going to go ahead. Um, we are using the May Spring um, White Chalcedone. And so I'm going to go ahead and add that right now. be mixing <clears throat> then once this is mixed it's mixed with the color with the mica powder already in it and then we don't have to keep stirring so let's get this mixed Okay, so we are going to pour our um, background into our beverage coasters. And again, this is for a couple, so we're only doing two coasters, one for each of them. So when you're sitting and you're doing, I don't know, like date night kind of stuff, or, you know, just two people kind of having a private moment or just sharing some quiet time or some loud time. It doesn't have to be quiet. It can be quite noisy. Um, watching a game, uh, watching a movie, that's what this is for. Alright, and all we're going to do is put some Heat to this to pop any air bubbles. Cover this and let this cure overnight. And then tomorrow we will add the sea turtle, the little turtle couple, the little guys.
right heat gun Alrighty, so we will cover these and allow them to cure overnight. Okay, gentle people, it is the next day. So we have um, a couple of things to do. We are going to uncover these coasters. We are going to unmold our hexagon coasters. Voila. And you see how nice that uh, turquoise or um, what's it called? Okinawa blue rim looks. That's really nice. There you go. When we printed the artwork to go on our charcuterie board, we also printed the turtles to go on the coasters. These are they. And so we are going to cut these out, drop them in the water, and then attach them to the coasters. And so let me go get the water. Set that there. When I... Um, print these I always print them with a rim um, with this line on the outside with a border I guess is what I want to say I print them with a border and then that's my line to cut so I'm always cutting just inside that border uh, you could leave the border if you want it you could actually leave the border um, but I use this border as my as my guide and then you can see how nicely that fits right in there that's cute 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 and we're going to drop that in the water And then we're going to cut the other one. Drop that in there. And then these don't take but uh, a minute or two. see what we're working with here nice And I like, now let me, I, well I can't show it to you now because I've already put these in here. Um, you could position this so that the straight line is lined up with the straight. The point I was trying to make was that um, this is a horizontal line, the water that they're standing in and I opted to have that horizontal line fit into the angle here because I think it's more that's more interesting looking than to have that line be horizontal do you understand what I'm saying I think you do alright so we just need to get a paper towel and squeegee Let's get rid of all the initial excess water. And then begin the process of squeegee. And we start from the center. And actually, if I get up, let me see if I can really let you see the water 
in this. But I want you to see. Can you see the water? Let me see. Can you see the water in the corner there? There you go. Now you can see it. So if I take the paper towel and I You can see the paper towel soaking, soaking that up. But then I go back in here and I squeegee this again, you'll see more water. So there is moisture underneath this that you have to get rid of. And that's, that's the key. So if you are squeegee, use your squeegee. done correctly, the artwork should look like it was painted on the coaster. And again, you want to make sure you have no wrinkles or ripples along your edges. But voila! I like, I like, I like. What do you think? I like it. All right, so let's do the other one. I like. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And so we're just going to set these aside and let these dry for about an hour and then we'll come back and put the clear coat on these. So let me set them there so you can see that we have done what we set out to do. Okay, so we our measuring cup is marked. So we need 10 milliliters of the Part B hardener. a resin and you don't really <clears throat> you don't need 10 milliliters to seal these however it is almost impossible to measure accurately five milliliters. I don't have a single measuring cup for five milliliters. So we just do the 10 and keep it simple. Five minutes. Okay, and then we simply uh, you know the drill of my table. It is not level, so one little popsicle stick. And so now we just pour our resin.
then I have a habit of tilting. Again, I, I'm always concerned about once you scratch or tear your artwork the first time you take a popsicle stick and go across it, then whatever you do that messes up, you make sure you never do it again. And so you can always use the silicone stir sticks that I now own, but I generally will allow my resin, I just let it, I just tilt it and let it go. And resin is self-leveling. So if you're concerned about having too much in one area, uh, it's gonna level off on its own. Just make sure you get your corners. Okay, so there are guys. Heat gun to pop air bubbles. these and allow them to cure a couple of hours and then our set uh, oh no our set's not done because once these are cured then we sand the edges and apply the rubber bumps okay gentle people it has been a few hours. Uh, let me take the cover off of this. And of course, these uh, are done. That's what they look like. So what we need to do is just the finishing, which is sand the back edge. Um, I used to use, it's funny, the other day, I used to use this thing called a deburring tool. I use I used to use this and you just take it and scrape it along the edges. And um, I don't know, I kind of found that uh, the sanding, I, I don't know for some reason, I guess because of the big boards and whatnot, but um, opened the door and was looking at this deburring tool and realized I don't use it. Uh, much at all anymore on my things that have a curved surface I do where I can't fit in the um, where I can't fit what do you call it the Dremel head uh, so I'm just re re what do you call it when you bring something out again resurrecting resurrecting my deburring tool. And what made me think of it was because I was using that heat shield, which is what plumbers, which is what plumbers use. And the deburring tool is another tool that plumbers use when they want to trim the edges of metal to get rid of the sharp edges. So those are done. Let me just vacuum that up real quick. So even though I use the deburring tool, I still have to go back and use the sander right on these corners because you can't cut these corners off and these corners are kind of sharp. Um, so I'll do it the old school way. And old school just... Just those. And it's these corners. Yeah, a guy who does woodworking introduced me to this and told me it would be good on my resin, which it was. Um, so these are, um, we've done our edges here. Let's uh, 
put four, I use the 3M rubber bumps. So we're just going to put four Four of these. And again, I like the rubber bumps because they are non-skid. Uh, different from um, cork. Cork, when it gets wet, when it gets wet, it becomes mucky. It will mildew, get mold on it. Um, and if it never gets wet, then what happens is it dries and it crumbles and when it crumbles it makes a big mess on your tables so i like these because these last almost forever so there you go and the last the very last thing that i always do and you guys who watch me know we then take our DuraClear gloss varnish and I'm just not even going to put this in a container because there are only these two coasters. And we just go along this edge with the varnish. On a white or a light color like this, you wouldn't notice it, but on something that's darker, you would clearly notice the gray or the white edge. And again, I'm always talking about how you finish, how you finish your work. So we're not going to shortcut here. We did use that deburring tool. So my gentlemen are done and so we will add them to the charcuterie board and the cheese tools and make this a set a beautiful gift set um, for Valentine's Day for an engagement for a wedding gift for an anniversary gift for um, same-gender couple so there you go 